The first thing you will do is go to Rhino Inside and you will launch the Rhino app here. You are actually launching Rhino inside of Revit. So for this tutorial, we'll need to make sure that you have downloaded Rhino Inside. Now we can go from Revit to Rhino and Rhino to Revit, but the purpose of this video is to create elements in Rhino and then place those as real objects in Revit itself. The first step will be to create a rectangle in the Rhino environment. We're gonna go 20 feet by 20 feet. We will select that rectangle and explode. Now we have a series of lines. The first thing that we'll do is go to the Revit tab. You'll notice a lot of different categories here, but the one we want is a wall curve. We can also make a wall profile, but we'll do that afterwards. And the idea here is to create a real Revit system wall family. We don't just want a family in Revit, we want a wall system family, and we want it to act as if we create walls in Revit, not just as a separate families or an, an object within Revit. And as we go through, you'll see uh, why that's important. So the first thing we need to do is connect a curve. So we can type in curves. I can go set multiple curves and I will select these curves and I can input that into the wall element here. The next item that we need is a type. Now we're not going to find this under the uh, type panel. We're actually going to find this under input and we can see this category here called built in categories. So we'll select that and you'll notice that this will give us a list of all the built in uh, categories within Revit. Now we will go down to walls and it is a bit, bit tricky to navigate, but that's just how they've done it. Walls. So now we're actually selecting all the walls within the Revit family. So all your custom walls that you've created in your Revit project will show uh, when we selected that querying in your Revit file. The next input that we want is an element type picker. So this is going to take that wall and going to query all the walls in your project and then you can select the specific wall type that you want. We can then put that into type. So we can see our wall is already generating in here. We will have to flip these curves to have uh, the other orientation to make sure those are all uh, joining correctly. And you can see that we can toggle through these various uh, wall types. The next thing that we want to set is the height. So we'll come here and We'll determine a height. We'll start with 20, so we have a nice range, and maybe we'll give it about 15 feet or 16 feet. Now we can see that we can change the height, as well as what we can do here is we can resize this, and that will automatically update the, the Revit file here. There is an option if it uh, has been flipped, you can also uh, flip it here as well. We can then set the level as well. So if you have levels in the project, we can correlate it uh, with the level. So we'll set this one to level one and we'll type level one in there. So let's start to organize this a little bit. The next thing we'll see is a location line. So this will set the default wall location. So we're gonna actually, uh, we can mess around with this for a little bit. We'll start with the uh, center line You'll notice that these items are not initially joined. We'll also have a toggle for allow joins. So we can duplicate this and now we can toggle it so that these items would be connected. We will now do a couple other videos on how to make floors, roofs, and do some really cool parametric tools within Grasshopper itself to explore design options really quickly and have updated materials in Revit.